Ah, it's a bright new day. With a bright new studio. Hey guys, what's up? I can jump in here! Isn't this so cool? I have actual space! Woo! <laughs> I was gonna do a somersault, but then I remembered I can't do somersaults. But check out the room! I can jump, I can stretch, I can... What in the name of the great holy god Usopp is this thing? Seems like some kind of wooden contraption made out of some kind of matter. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh, this is incredible. Oh, the back support. Oh, this is amazing. Did you guys know about these? This is great. There's an alternative to making YouTube videos without sitting on the edge of your bed. Oh my god, this is amazing. Ah, but okay, the point is, I think we have everything set up here. Uh, we got a chair, as I think it's been called before. We got a new desk, which I built with my own two hands. I might as well be Cuddy Flam himself. Well, actually, I, I bought it, you know, I had to assemble it. But I screwed in the cam bolts with my own two hands. Also, my mother helped at certain points. It took a while, but I got it done, okay? So, yeah, I think we're good. Now, look, this is not the final stage of this studio, okay? Like, we're far from that. I mean, I still have, like, if you, you know, look at that. Look at all these boxes over here, okay? Yeah, we're not done with this yet, okay? We still got stuff to put up. Um, I grossly underestimated how long this was going to take. I assumed, wow, I'm gonna get like four days or so to like move into my new house and unpack everything and I'll have the studio up and running by Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it works. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff you gotta do when you move, as it turns out, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the point is basically, you know, this is not even close to being done. I mean, this wall's not even like filled with stuff yet. There's actually a bookcase that's gonna go here with all my manga on it. So that's gonna take uh, some time to put that together. I thought that I would have had that together by now, but you know, I want your guys' input on this though. Um, oh, by the way, if you notice a little bit of an echo, I did get like the, the soundproofing foam. So I gotta put that all over the room as well. It's just, this is not the final phase. We're not even like, okay, in Dragon Ball terms, this is like Frieza's first form, all right? He's got like three or four more after this. All right, so just just bear with me here, but also let me know about some ideas that you guys might have. You know, just like, oh, teching, you should put this back there, or maybe some lights or whatever. It'd be really cool if you could do this. Give me suggestions, because I want you to be comfortable in this studio as much as I'm comfortable in this studio. Also, we're having a pajama party today. I don't know if you guys noticed, okay? And I also have a halo, because there's a new light. It's kind of like track lighting that points right at my head. So I, I, my hair is really crazy. It's normally this crazy. It's just there's not a halo normally to like focus on it. Um, and I also have to turn my head this way other than this way. So there's change all over the place. We're going to have to take some time to get to where we need to be. But I think everything, as long as we go in this together, I think everything will be okay. Right, Barry? Oh, shit, I forgot Barry. Rushed back to the house and got him. It's cool. All right. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Okay. Presenting <clears throat> uh, Barry D. Brick Esquire. I actually forgot to put that on his desk. He is definitely an Esquire. Barry D. Brick Esquire. There you go. Vice President of Teching 101 Industries. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, but let's get back into it. I mean, like, let's just ease ourselves back into making videos, I guess. And uh, for today, I actually have the perfect video, a video that I've wanted to make for a while now, because as soon as I realized I was getting my own house, I'm like, okay, I know what I have to do. And it actually involves my favorite straw hat, and that is, of course, Frankie Cuddy Flam. Because let's look at all the straw hats. How many of the straw hats are actually homeowners? How many of them actually own a house, okay? You would be surprised. Okay, first we got Luffy, all right? Luffy got raised by a bunch of mountain bandits. Obviously, Dadan was the one that, you know, owned that sort of fortress out in Mount Colbo on Don Island. Yeah, Sabo, Ace, and Luffy sort of made their little clubhouses out by, you know, Dadan's fortress. But, you know, that's a clubhouse. It's a tree house. It's not an actual house. By the way, 
tangent, have you ever had an actual treehouse, like a really cool treehouse? Because I never had one. When I was a little kid, we had this old scraggly dying tree in the backyard. We actually tore it down at one point because an ice storm hit and it split in half and almost like broke my window. But I kept bugging my dad to build a treehouse in that thing. And he's just like, no, it's rotting apart. It will fall apart before I even lay a single board in. So I never had a really cool treehouse, but that's beside the point. Treehouses are not actual homes. Okay. So Luffy never owned his own house. Zoro stayed at Shimosuke Village at the Ishin Dojo, so there's probably a room for him there. I'm actually kind of curious what Zoro's room would have looked at at the dojo, because I think he left when he was 17. So I don't know, maybe there was some some really cool scenes there, maybe like an inspirational quote from a favorite a favorite sword master of his. Maybe he shared a room with Kozaboro, because Kozaboro apparently lived in Shimosuke Village as well. Zoro met him when he was a little kid, okay? So maybe Kozaboro was there as this old man, and Zoro had to take care of him or whatever, maybe, but he never owned a house. Um, you might say Nami, but you remember when Bellamere died, Nojiko was the older adoptive sister, so it was Nojiko's house, not Nami's, and she was out wandering around the East Blue a lot of times to gather money for Arlong and everybody. She never actually owned the house. Usopp! My man Usopp! This is the reason he's a god and will forever be immortalized as the greatest One Piece character ever. So Usopp did own a house after his dad just kind of abandoned them. Yeah, Yasop was just kind of like, sorry honey, I need to head out to see to, you know, murder and pillage, you know, that's just my true calling. I'll, I'll send you a letter every once in a while, bye. So Yasop leaves, and then Banshina eventually passes away from an illness, and so it's just Usopp in the house, and he basically just lives there. Uh, the entire village kind of helps raise him, I would imagine, because Usopp was pretty young. Usopp was like seven or eight when his mother died. By the way, you know who else was a little kid living by himself after a relative passed away? That's right, Goku, and we all know how he turned out, so that's exactly the road that Usopp's gonna go down as well. But basically, yeah, it was the adage, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, you know, that was basically the idea with Usopp. You ever read the seventh uh, book in the series of Unfortunate Events uh, series, uh, The Vile Village? Basically the same concept, but, you know, with less crows. Uh, but yeah, Usopp was there, and it was really funny whenever he went to go leave um, the village to go, you know, join the Straw Hats, and he was, like, having that giant backpack, and it ripped out part of the wall. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the veggie pirates maybe rebuilt the wall and keep Usopp's house nice and tidy while he's gone. Uh, there's carrot and then onion and then, um... Who was the third veggie pirate in the little Usopp pirate group? Uh, asparagus? Yeah, it was asparagus. It was onion, carrot, and asparagus. Absolutely. So they probably take care of Usopp's house, I, I would imagine. But yeah, he owned his own house. It wasn't much, but he had it. Um, Sanji, of course, lived on the Baratier, which is not a house. It's a restaurant. So right away, that's debunked. Uh, let's see here. Uh, who was next? Oh, Chopper. Chopper lived in Drum Castle with Dr. Kareha. You know, he was basically doing like a like a student, like, like internship learning program or whatever because Dr. Kareha was basically teaching him about medicine so he basically got like free room and board while he was there learning about being a doctor but not really his house he did not own that castle I did not see Chopper's name on the deed technically Waffle's really the one that owned it and Kareha and Chopper were kind of just squatting there but Waffle was an asshole so I think it'll slide uh, then we have Robin <laughs> oh yeah Robin I'm um, she has a home well she had a home and then it burned down, and then the house next to hers burned down, and then the mountainside and forest next to that burned down, and then the entire island got bombed into oblivion by the world government. Um, you know what, to be fair though, I would imagine while she was working for Crocodile at Baroque Works, I imagine Crocodile would probably give her a pretty nice room to stay in. I mean, she was sort of the key to his uh, plan to revive Pluton. You know, she's the one that could read Poneglyphs. She was his second-in-command, even though Crocodile did betray her later on in the tomb. I would imagine her uh, her quarters in the Baroque Works headquarters in Rain Dinners was probably pretty nice, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, Robin uh, Robin has pretty bad luck with uh, staying anywhere in a particular long amount of time, except for right now with the Straw Hats. Um, then we get to Frankie, and I'm going to skip over him because that's sort of the point of the video. But after Frankie, we have Brooke. And I put his wall scroll up because Brooke was the first wall scroll I ever got, so I thought it would be appropriate here to have, you know, like it goes full circle, you know, like it started with the Brooke wall scroll and now it ends or it begins anew with the Brooke wall scroll, right? Okay. So, Brooke, uh, well, okay, technically he did have a house. Uh, it was a boat, but he lived there for 50 years. 
not because he really chose to, but because, you know, he really didn't have any other place to go because he was kind of adrift in the Florian Triangle. And uh, he didn't exactly have roommates, so to speak, but he did have the rotting uh, corpses of his friends. And that's, um... That's all that really matters at the end of the day. You know what's really messed up? I was actually thinking about this yesterday. Brooke was on that ship for 50 damn years. Do you know how long that is? I don't know how long that is. I'm only 28 years old. So, you know, but, but Brooke was an adult. 50 years on that ship. I started to think, man, some days he must have just, like, sat in the corner of the Rumbar Pirate Cruise ship and just counted, like the cracks in the wood or like the nails in the freaking you know the like the structure or whatever just be like one two three four Yo -ho 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 -ho. counting is fun because there's just nothing else to do other than hallucinating that his dead friends are alive but what else are you gonna do right all right so that was brooke i mean he kind of owned a house but it was a boat not really a houseboat just kind of a just kind of a ghost boat. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then after Brooke, of course, we have uh, Jean Bay. Jean Bay, actually, I don't know if Jean Bay ever had a house. I feel like he probably would. It's kind of the situation like Piccolo in the new Dragon Ball movie, where Piccolo just has a house now with like a mailbox and everything. And I'm like, well, Jean Bay lived on Fishman Island for several years. Uh, he worked in the Ammo Knights under uh, King Neptune. So he probably, I imagine the Ammo Knights probably had their own little like dormitories or whatever, right? So he probably stayed there with the other members of the Ammo Knights. But for a long time, he was a highly respected man. He was like, yo, you're boss Jean Bay, right? And, you know, he eventually saved the island by joining the Warlords. Like, what did Jean Bay do on his off time, right? I'm sure he stayed most, like, mostly in, like, the Fishman Karate, like, you know, dojo, maybe teaching people how to, like, you know, learn the skill and everything like that. But where did he go at night, you know? Take off his shoes and or his sandals and just chill out and watch TV, you know? He must have had a house down there somewhere. So Jean Bay's a little debatable, but as for the Straw Hats that are actually confirmed to own houses we only have two of them we have Usopp and we have Frankie and Frankie of course owned the Frankie house at Water 7 which unfortunately was completely destroyed and leveled by the Straw Hat Pirates ironic considering Frankie ended up joining the Straw Hat Pirates like yeah you guys were the ones that completely destroyed my house but um yeah, I guess I'll join your crew. We had that adventure at Eni's Lobby. I mean, it sort of evens it out, right? You destroyed my house and beat up all my, my family, and, uh, you know, but then you saved me from Eni's Lobby from the government, so I'll become your, your shipwright. I'm super! Oh, wait, I can actually do it now. I'm actually super! Yeah, okay, we're good. But anyway, yeah, so when it comes to the Frankie family, uh, the only members that I really remember by name are Zombai, who was like the leader of the gang. He was like the second in command right after Frankie. And then Mozu and Kiwi, who were the square sisters who have hair shaped like a square because... I don't know, Frankie has stars on his arms, so maybe they're like shapes. That's that's how we do things here in Water 7. That's how we let all of the citizens know that we're part of the same gang, the Frankie family. Frankie's got stars, we have squares. Come on, come on, Zombie, at a circle. You know, Tamagon. Tamagon was the really big dude because Tamago just means egg in Japanese. So Baron Tamago and Tamagon. Who would win in a fight? That'll be the next video. That'll be tomorrow. Um, there was also the Karakiri Destroyers, not the Karakuri Destroyers, the Karakiri Destroyers, um, or the Herculean, I think, Destroyers, were the Herculean Strongmen in the English dub. And they were basically, you know how some humans, like Whitebeard, right over there, that's actually an autographed uh, signing of Whitebeard's wanted poster by his English VA that I actually got from a fan, so thank you. Um, but yeah, Whitebeard, you know, he's a human, but he's a big human. He's a big guy. He's like six meters tall or something like that. Not quite a giant. In fact, only about half the size of the smallest giant. Giants. Even Big Mom is not giant sized, but still for a human, freaking huge, right? Absolutely. So you got these uh, Herculean destroyers. There's three members, and we don't know any of their names, but they led the charge through uh, Eni's lobby, of course, uh, and until they reached the actual giants, you know, uh, Oimo and Kashi, and they got destroyed and, you know, ironically destroyed and defeated there by even more Herculean destroyers. Uh, but it was really cool that, like, they joined up and they were, like, their prime fighting force. Uh, then, of course, you can't forget Sodom and Gomorrah, who were the 
fighting bulls, basically the upgraded form of the Kagura's. You know, the Kagura's were those little seahorses that just basically were, they were sea horses, basically, you know, that would carry the, um, the gondolas around Water 7, much like Venice, right, okay? Well, there's, like, upgraded forms, like, bigger, you know, titanic versions of the Kagura's, the fighting bulls, and there was Sodom and Gomorrah that, you know, also charged into the, uh, the city of Eni's lobby in order, in order to, you know, save Robin and Frankie and everybody. And, of course, Sodom and Gomorrah, of course, referencing the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah from the Old Testament, right? You know, the, the cities that God smited. And they actually did kind of get smited in Eni's lobby, but they didn't die, so we're good. They're all still alive. So, after the Eni's lobby, and after everybody returns to Water 7, um, you know, wanted posters are issued. And I actually got new wanted posters for everybody for the studio, um, you know, when I do my videos, because I'll be actually filming the reviews over here against this wall. I have to assemble a new backdrop still. That's another thing. It's on the list. But, uh, yeah, that'll be over there. But at any rate, yeah, so uh, when the new Wanted posters were issued for all the Straw Hats plus Frankie, you know, they implore the Straw Hats, you know, please take Frankie with you. I mean, he is, he is a pirate at heart. You know, he's got the blood of it in him. You know, his parents were both pirates. You know, you have to take him because otherwise, bounty hunters and everybody are going to be coming to this island, the Marines and the government, uh, especially since Frankie wasn't just like, he wasn't just a regular criminal. I mean, he was involved in taking out, uh, you know, the CP9 after all. So that government's definitely going to be come knocking on Water 7 once they know he's there. So the Straw Hats are like, sure, you know, we'll ask him, and then Frankie gets his balls squeezed by Robin, of course, and then he joins. That's Frankie probably had the weirdest way to join the Straw Hats. He was a previous enemy, and then he got his balls squeezed by Robin, and then he joined. It's pretty weird, huh, Barry? It's pretty weird indeed. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, um, you know, Frankie joins, and they basically rebuild the Frankie house. I mean, it's kind of a, of a shoddy, sort of really quick method. I mean, they're more dismantlers than actual carpenters. But after the time skip, they actually join up with Gali La, and they help build the new sea train, the Puffing Ice, headed up by Iceberg, okay? So I imagine they would learn, you know, like, like Zombai and Tamagon and Kiwi and Mozu. They learned some carpentry skills along the way. They might have even actually replaced, like, Kaku and Luchi after they defected, right? So something like that. Maybe Zombai. By was just really skilled with, um, actually, I forget the jobs that Kaku and Luchi actually had. It was stated, like, you know, I forget, one of them was, like, the Dao specialist or whatever, but I can't remember. Uh, but, you know, they, maybe they were just really skilled at that and they learned. Um, so, yeah, it's a little strange because, you know, Frankie, I, I feel like the government should know that Frankie was the head of the Frankie family in Water 7. And so even though Frankie left, the family is still stationed there, probably still living in the same house. It's probably rebuilt at this point. But it's like, you know, doesn't the government know of like, hey, the Frankie family's in Water 7. You know, they're associated with Frankie, who's one of the biggest criminals and the biggest crew in the entire world. So we should probably go over there and try to bring them in. But they never do. So that's the thing, like... I feel like the government should have known. They did know. They did know exactly where the Straw Hats went right afterwards. And they sent Garp, which is very weird. It's just like, because Sengoku knows the connection between Garp and uh, Luffy. So it's like, okay, Garp, go to Water 7 and bring those, uh, bring those pirates in. And Garp's like, okay, and he goes. And of course, he doesn't bring Luffy in. He talks to him. He tries to bring him in later, but was he really? I mean, he threw a giant iron ball at them, so maybe he was. But my point is, at the end of the day, it's like... They could have sent, like, another Vice Admiral to Water 7 to bring in the Straw Hats to bring in Frankie after Eni's Lobby, but they didn't. Uh, maybe Garp was just, like, well, maybe Garp, you know, Sengoku was aware, but Garp, you know, none of the other Marines knew. So Garp's like, oh, I'm going to go personally and bring him in. And all the other Marines, all the Vice Admirals are going to shut up because why would you, you know, why, well, why would you talk back to Garp, the hero of the Marines? He's the fist. And so he just went, right? But, um... Yeah, I mean, that's that's the video. I just basically wanted to do a video on the Frankie family and the Frankie house. Uh, it was a really cool house. Like, Frankie had impeccable interior design uh, skills on top of carpentry and dismantling skills. I really wish I would have Frankie to help me out here. So, yeah, uh, by the way, if I look really tired right now, it's probably just the lighting, but I am also very tired right now. But I woke up just shortly uh, a while ago. I just really wanted to film a video because it feels like I haven't filmed a video in, like, a week. So thank you for all your patience. And uh, this isn't even the final chair. This is just one of my dining room chairs. I have another office chair over there. Haven't assembled that yet either. So we'll get to that eventually. But um, yeah, thanks for watching this video, everybody. I appreciate all of your patience. And um, yeah, just let me know what you feel about the studio. And I'll try to make adjustments based on that. 
And I'm sure it'll be bigger and better than the other one. I don't have capybara facts for you today. I didn't have time to write down any capybara facts. But I will be back with that at some point. We'll probably go into November with the capybara facts. Um, thanks for watching, though, everybody. This will be Teching and Barry, Vice President of Teching 101 LLC, signing out. Later, everyone.